Hey, this is Jim. I'd just like to give you a quick rundown of QuickCal Mobile for the iPhone, uh, specifically for iPhone OS 4. So this is QuickCal. Um, many of you might have seen this as a desktop widget, um, but now it's on the iPhone. So really quickly, a touch at the interface, um, you'll see a list of events for the next seven days. Uh, stuff in green is currently active. Um, this little red bar just sort of hovers over the next event that's coming up in the current day and it tells you when it is and where it's at. Um, but that's not really what this app is for. This app is for creating events really, really, really fast. So let me show you how that's done. You just go into this this text box up here and you just type what you're doing. So a movie uh, at 10 p.m. That's it. So you'll see as I typed it, you're getting a preview of what the natural language parser is seeing that the, the event is for. And then if I hit enter, you'll see that movie uh, is created for tonight at 10 p.m. Um, there's other ways, you know, you don't even need to use, uh, you know, AM, PM kind of stuff. I can say code uh, 9.30 to 11.30. And you'll see that uh, it figures out that it's 9.30 a.m. Um, if I'm not very specific on it. And since that's already passed today, it knows it's for tomorrow. This is exactly what I do, so I'm going to hit enter on this one. Um, this also has support for locations, so um, so it'll show up on these little red bars and stuff. So um, I can show you how to do one of those. So I type, you know, breakfast um, at 5 a.m. So again, it knows it's it's tomorrow, and then I could do you know something like at Tom's Diner, and it's got everything. It knows what's going on. You hit enter, it's created, it's done. One more example of that, team meeting Friday at 10 in the FOO conference room. So all the location and everything's all done, you hit enter, we're good. Um, by default, every event you create, is last, it lasts one hour, but you could change that a couple different ways. So just I'll show you a couple examples, but really it's just type whatever you think and this thing's going to normally know what you're saying. So I could say things like lunch tomorrow um, at noon. So it's got that and you see it's the hour, but then you can say it for 90 minutes and it's now moved the end to 1.30 p.m. Um, you could also say I'm going to back out of this one. I'll say noon to 2 p.m. I don't even need the P. It knows, it knows that. So I'll create that, and now we got a, a little lunch meeting for tomorrow. You can specify uh, days of the week, too. So you saw one earlier where I said Friday, but you could do, you know, dates and things. So, um, you know, I could say day off, 7-9. Uh, You'll see that's on Friday. Um, I could also just say Friday or next Friday. And it, this this will it'll figure that out all for you. So I'll create that one. Uh, back so as you see that you can create calendar events. I can type on a keyboard in the simulator a little bit quicker than I could type on the iPhone. But just trust me, it's 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 much much faster to type um, to type these events out than it is to create with any kind of utility that you have on your iPhone. So back to the interface, you'll see up here the calendar. On the simulator, there's only one calendar there, um, so I can't switch it. But if you have multiple calendars synced to your phone from, like, you know, Exchange or Google Cal or, you know, whatever you got, um, they'll show up there, and if you, you can cycle through them by just tapping up there. Or, um, uh, yeah, and then the colors of your calendar sort of will go along with the, the little dots on the side so you know what calendar is for. If you pinch and zoom on this table in the middle, with all the events on it, I just like pinched out, and you'll see that it gives a little bit more detail to all your events. So before it was just one line per. Um, now you'll see that there are uh, multiple, or the end time is here a little bit faint. Um, it's less important than the start time is, and then the location of where this thing's at. Both the the level of detail that you can have on the um, events and um, uh, the calendar that you're using can also be done, like just taking care of in the settings thing. So I'm gonna 
I'm going to say it's you know minimal details, and now it's minimal. Another thing here uh, that this application does is this smart reminder. So one, one thing when you're creating events, you want to make sure that you're reminded the event's going to happen. So what this does, and it's a, a pretty slick way of doing this, is that by default, all your events are going to remind you 15 minutes in advance. Um, the, the great case that I've seen people describe this in, though, is if you really created, if you were going to create an event a year in advance, it, it would really suck if someone surprised you 15 minutes in advance of that thing that was very important to do a year in advance. You probably want to be known, like, uh, reminded of it a little bit before. So this Smart Reminders looks at how far in advance the appointment is that you're creating and will remind you multiple times uh, based on however you configured it. So if something was months away when you created it, you could have it, you know, uh, remind you a week, two weeks, three weeks before that. It'll also remind you a day before and then 15 minutes before. So some events, it's going to create three alarms for you. But really, just if you just let this these settings sit by themselves and just start creating events, you'll find that it's just very intuitive. And it just feels like that's how every calendar application should do its reminders. Um, one last thing on this, uh, the interface, um, is if the, you saw on this, well, this team conference call, um, if you click into it, if you go to details, you can go and modify this. This is just the standard iPhone uh, calendar modification screen. So you can go in here and edit and add attendees or whatever. Um, but you'll see here that this team conference call, the location field of it, I'm going to look at it one more time, has a, a phone number followed by a series of digits, and it doesn't always have to be this format. Um, it could be anything that looks like it. So if you have something like this, and at my job I got a lot of these like this, I spend a lot of my days on conference calls, um, you can just click join conference and can't really do it in the simulator um, because there is no phone attached to the simulator but it will automatically offer to dial and then um, dial into the conference bridge for you. Um, so it's just a one-click dial into the conference bridge. Um, another thing, too, if there's a phone number but it doesn't have a string of digits afterwards, so it's not a conference bridge, it's just a regular phone number, it, it'll it know that, too. And where is it? There is a... Oh, this discussion with Patrick. Um that has a, it'll just be call if it doesn't see those other digits, but again, it'll just call in. Um, the only thing you need to do is just tell the people that are creating these events or you yourself, just make sure that the phone number is in the location field. Um, that's about it for this right now. Um, there's uh, quite a few features coming uh, it, to this application, so check it out. It's just search for Quick Cal Mobile or go to quickcal.smellypuppy.com and you'll have links to this as well as the macOS desktop widget that does the same thing. Thanks. Bye.